Hi, this is Kerry Artak with Artak Advisory, and this is a video supplement to uh, the Monday afternoon AgriTalk show for Monday, March 8th. And I'll be covering three markets in today's show, uh, May corn, May soybeans, and I'm going to continue following up with May cotton. This may be the last cotton I do for a little while, uh, assuming we get downside follow through. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. Before I jump into the charts, just would love for you to fill out the free trial form on this AgriTalk video page. Uh, at the bottom of this page is a free trial form. If you've never had a free trial, or if you haven't had one in at least six months, you're certainly uh, allowed to have another two free weeks, uh, and I invite you to do so. Uh, fill out the first name, last name, your email address, of course, a phone number, uh, and then you'll start receiving the daily advisory letters for two full uninterrupted weeks. Uh, I do make a call out to you. We can talk the markets if you like and cover some of your strategies, uh, some of your hedging or trading concerns. Um, and then who knows, maybe at the end of the two weeks, you'd like to become a regular monthly subscriber. Uh, it's pretty simple. You're either interested or not. Um, there's not a heavy sell. I think the work sells itself. All of these charts, by the way, I'm going to be showing you our weekly continuation charts, except I'm showing you a monthly chart in cotton. And just know that the daily newsletter advisory incorporates daily charts as well. So it's much more finessed and it gives early leads on signals uh, that uh, are only determined on the weekly charts at the end of any given week. So let's jump into May corn. I'm going to start with a long-term chart you may be familiar with if you've been looking at these videos, watching these videos for the last number of months. Uh, we still remain in the grips of a long-term sign of strength. Now, there's obviously been some hesitation, some consolidation over the last month, month and a half. Uh, but overall, having settled in late December above that 465 and a quarter channel top, uh, that you can see here maintains and I think it's realistic to expect at some point this year whether it's a summer fall high or sooner the 622 and three quarter to 647 and three quarter area now in uh, early February uh, when the March contract was front and center it rallied to within one percent of this 50 percent retracement and I'd been mentioning at the time in late December that we had this buy signal above 465 and a quarter that 579 even should be considered a two to three month target took a couple of months we rallied to within one percent of it and we backed off since so this is sort of a midterm ceiling 579 even still remains true uh, and uh, right now I've got that actually shown on this chart this is a weekly chart the same exact chart just blown up and you can see that for the week ahead I've got decent resistance at 562 and a quarter that can contain weekly buying pressures if we close above 562 and a quarter even on a daily basis I think 579 even should be expected within just several days once again 579 even that long-term 50 percent retracement that if tested say this week or next week can absorb buying possibly through April trade, but I am expecting an eventual violation of this mark, and we'll go back to this chart, and if we did settle the week above 579 even, this 647 and three quarter, kind of a five to eight month target right now, becomes more of a two to three month objective where the broader corn market can actually place an annual high. Let's look at the downside. I mean, we have some uh, minor points, but they're on the daily chart. And so the daily corn letter is apprising you of where our downward pivot point would be into later March that if settled below, and I'm not going to give that right now because it's changing too rapidly, uh, 502 half. So bottom line here, what you're looking at really is a midterm two-sided framework, congestive framework. And I say midterm, I'm talking through April trade between 502 half, which is a level that can contain selling into May expiration if tested over the coming weeks, and 579 even, and as I said a moment ago, can contain buying through April. And so we could trade inside this wedge in the later May contract life, not until or unless we were to close below 502 half do I see this market then likely to test long-term support at 465 and a quarter within a matter of weeks where the market can uh, bottom out through the rest of the year. And once again, above which ultimately anticipating 647 and three quarter. 
I think that sums it up for May corn. Let's jump into May soybeans right now. And this is just sort of a reminder of the big picture. Uh, back in November, we settled above this 1135 and three quarter formation, then indicating 1658 half. And once again, the timing here is more like five to eight months. This is not altogether different than that 647 and uh, uh, 647 area that you saw on May corn just a moment ago. So that is big picture. Um, right now, I've got kind of a stair step approach down to what I consider to be um, kind of trend defining support. And when I say trend defining, the, the um, momentum, the ability for the market to push onward and upward to new highs as we continue in the summer trade is clearly intact. First of all, about 1307 and a quarter and secondarily above 1237 even. So yeah, it is stair step right now. Uh, if 1307 and a quarter were tested over the next few weeks, I'm telling subscribers can contain selling into May expiration. And uh, once tested, we can continue trading in this consolidated framework uh, into May expiration. Closing below 1307 and a quarter, expect several weeks, three to five at the most, 1237 even, which is a trend defining speed line now that can absorb selling into summer trade. And once tested, we can round up and back to new highs uh, into summer trade. Uh, it would certainly delay a 1658 half target, but just know that at some point over the next full year of trade, holding above 1135 and three quarter, 1658 half is realistic. And I'm, what I'm giving you here are 1307 and a quarter and 1237 even, both monthly containment levels. There is no wave right now for me to say, yes, we're going to retest this 1135 and three quarter long term floor. There's just no way to do it. Uh, it is stair step to the downside. So the next solid stick your neck out buy zone, hedge lifting territory into later spring is 1307 and a quarter. And above this, uh, new highs in constant reach. Let's take a look at the nearer term weekly chart for May soybeans. And that's really for the week ahead. 1494 even is a level that can contain weekly buying pressures. And, uh, you know, once tested, we could fall back into the lower 1300 area that I showed you in the previous chart within a matter of three to five weeks. But given the longer term bullish dynamic above not only 1135 and change, but that uh, 12, uh, what do we have here? 12, 1237, even, you know, we've got a long term buy, bullish dynamic on a number of counts. And so closing above 1494 even is considered an eventuality. And if at the end of this week, the 1596 formation then considered a realistic two to three month target. And by the way, 1596, not far off the mark from that 1658 level I showed you here. Oops, sorry about that. I'm just going to eliminate that. Uh, 1658, the end of the pencil, <laughs> the pencil mark right around that 1658. There you are right there. So not far. If uh, 1596 is really, if you do the math here, as we get into later March and into April trade, it actually merges with this long term resistance level on the weekly chart. 1658 half. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is if we close above 1594 even this week off to the races, that long term target at 1658 half then likely to be realized in a matter of three to five weeks or so. So keep that in mind. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get that settlement this week above 1494 even because it actually can contain buying on a weekly basis, possibly through the balance of March trade. But it is our upward acceleration, our upward pivot point uh, in the later May contract life. Let's finish with cotton. Cotton has been testing this targeted long-term resistance level. I've mentioned this now for the last couple of weeks on the show. Uh, 92.20 to 93.88 for the entire month of March. It is our ceiling. It has been a target since the September long-term buy signal. We've now reached that target and now that we have, the market is now inclined to fall back into the very low 80s over the next few weeks and even lower into the upper mid to upper 60s over the next few months. So downside, if we test it this week, 81.21 to 82.20 can absorb selling really into April trade. And from here, we could rally back up 
into this long-term resistance area within a matter of three to five weeks or so, but closing below uh, 81.21 at the end of this week, and I don't think it's likely, but if so, then we're looking for 66 and change within another three to five weeks. I'm telling Cotton subscribers that holding below this big picture resistance, 92.20 to 93.88, if you're a big picture cotton trader or hedger, you need to allow for 66 and change, 66 handle long-term support over the coming months. Inversely, if we were to close, uh, I think any week above 93.88 by at least a 1% margin, I'll let you do the math on that. Uh, and then certainly at the end of March above 93.88 by a 1% margin sustains a meaningful bullish dynamic that continues into later year. The 135 to 155 region, this wide zone then anticipated over the next, I'm gonna say five to eight months where uh, cotton can actually put out a decade high perhaps, but we're not there yet. Right now, we're heavy below 92.20, anticipating the low 80s and possibly mid 60s over the coming months. And that's all that needs to be said for this week's AgriTalk video supplement. So do yourself a favor. Fill out the free trial form on this website. Take that two-week test drive. You've nothing to lose and much to gain.